This episode is brought to you by ThePuzzler.com. In this video, we look at problems involving knights and knaves. Knights and knave problems, also called true teller and liar problems, are logic puzzles in which a set of statements is provided. But some of the statements are true and some of the statements are false. The main purpose of these problems is to determine which statements are true or false based on the information given. Let us first look at a problem before we learn more. There are two men. One of them is wearing a red shirt and the other is wearing a blue shirt. The two men are named Andrew and Bob, but we do not know which is Andrew and which is Bob. The guy in the blue shirt says, I'm Andrew, and the guy in the red shirt says, I'm Bob. If we know that at least one of them lied, then what color shirt is Andrew wearing? It's impossible for only one of them to be lying because that would entail that they both have the same name, which we know isn't the case. Since we know that at least one of them lied, we deduce that both must be lying, which means we have to swap the names we were given. Bob wears a blue shirt and Andrew wears a red shirt. This means that our answer is that Andrew wears a red shirt. Let's look at some general methods to tackle knights and knaves. We have three main ways using systematic casework, finding shortcuts, and using self-referential statements. Systematic casework is considering each possible case and deciding if the case is possible according to the given information. Let us try casework on the first problem. Here are two possible cases. Either Andrew is in the blue shirt and Bob is in the red shirt. Both of the statements would be true, which is not possible. Case 2, Bob is in the blue shirt and Andrew is in the red shirt. Both of the statements would be false, which is possible. Thus, Andrew is wearing red. Method number 2, conditioning on specific constraints. There are three main techniques to consider when you're trying to find shortcuts. We can prove the correctness of our answer by contradiction, we can condition on specific constraints, or we can identify contradictory statements. Technique number one, proving the correctness of our answer by contradiction. A solution describing tedious casework is often neither engaging nor concise. Even worse, it is sometimes unnecessary. It is much easier to find why the incorrect answer is a contradiction. You can also prove why making your answer incorrect will be a contradiction. Method number two, conditioning. Here is an example. After Mrs. Jacobs' five children received their test scores, she asked them what their test scores were. Her first child said that at least one of them failed algebra. Her second child said that at least two of them failed algebra. Her third child said at least three of them failed algebra. Her fourth child said that at least four of them failed algebra. If only one child is telling the truth, can you determine how many of Mrs. Jacob's children? Let us now apply technique number two. We can now easily constrain our condition to the number of people who failed algebra. Suppose exactly four, three, or two children fail algebra. In each of these cases, our assumption would be incorrect. Suppose exactly one children failed algebra. Then only her first child is telling the truth, which satisfies our assumption. Suppose none of the children failed algebra. Then nobody is telling the truth, which again contradicts our statement. Technique number three, identifying contradictory statement. Here is an example. Suppose there are three people, A, B, and C, each of whom make these claims. Person A says B is telling the truth, person B says A is not guilty, and person C says A is guilty. Given that only one of them is telling the truth, can you determine who's guilty? Notice that person B and person C gave contradicting viewpoints, so only one of them can be telling the truth, and the other must be lying. Because at least one of B and C is already telling the truth, 
A can't be telling the truth anymore. So A statement is false, which means that B is not telling the truth. Thus, C is telling the truth, or in other words, A is guilty. Self-referential statements are our third tool. Sometimes a truth teller or liar problem can involve one or more self-referential statements. In other words, the statement makes a claim about its own truth or falseness. Here is a simple example to clarify this idea. If the statement, this statement is both true and false is logical, is the statement true or false? As a side note, a logical statement cannot be both true and false, so the statement must be false, which is consistent with the fact that it is falsely claimed to be true, as well as false. I hope that you learned something that will help you better tackle knights and knave type problems. Want to test your knowledge of what you learned in this video? Here are two problems to try on your own. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button if you enjoyed or learned anything from this video. Be sure to check out thepuzzler.com for more awesome and free math content. Be sure to check out our website to find out more about an up 